Roy Shaw and Donny the Bull Adams, uh, 1975 was a huge, huge event. Donny the Bull Adams was unbeaten. He was, um, as in Snatch, I think Brad, I think one of them described him as literally harder than a, a coffin nail. Um, I think, I think in the fight though, Donny, a lot of people when they watch the footage of the, um, <clears throat> The, there's about four videos on, on our channel and them they were kindly given to us, donated to us by Gary Shaw, Roy's only biological son. And uh, it certainly gave our channel the right boost and kick up um, the backside. But yeah, we've there's four clips on of the uh, the old vintage footage, which is, it's never been seen before. And when you watch, I know the fight's not on, but listen, or the, the lack of the fight, but everyone's seen... What happened when Roy Pretty Boy Shaw fought Donny the Bull Adams? Uh, I described the chapter in this book I did with Gary Shaw. Uh, I called it Taming the Bull. And a lot of people, when you watch that fight, and it, it's literally over in 15 seconds, something like that. It's, um, it's very non-eventful. It's literally Ron runs Roy runs across like a madman, hits him. Uh, at one point, you look at him like he's picking him up to help him, and it's just literally Roy hitting him again. A lot of people have. I know I've spoken to people on that on over the years, and when you watch that fight, um, a lot of people kind of think Donny the Bull Adams was older than he was. Now, he. Actually, on that fight, he was something like 45. Uh, so it was in 1975. Roy was born in 1936. So that actually, Roy was something like 30, 38, 39 himself. So, although Donny the Bull Adams, who sadly passed in 1996, um, he looked a lot older than Roy, shall we say. There wasn't that much. There wasn't a great deal between them. Uh, I've had a look on box records. Uh, I don't think there's anything of Donny the Bull as they've been a professional, but everyone knows the um, the gypsy, the heritage of, of the boxing. Um, Donny the Bull Adams was literally, you know, a proper fighting man. He'd never, ever tasted defeat. Not that I'm aware of in my research, and I spoke to a few people who were quite in the know. Um, there has been a few comments on um, the clips underneath. Who's that guy who's m massaging him? Um, I know a few people have commented saying it's almost homoerotic, but um, that guy was Tommy the Bear Brown, who's a known asso or well-known associate from the Cray Twins. Um, he was very well known among the boxing circles. So that, that I don't know, I've had there's been a few comments actually. Um, I don't run his channel, Warcry Publishing do, but I know it's come up a few times saying who's that guy, who's that guy. Um, yeah, so yeah, there's there's a couple of photos of him with Red, with Reggie Cray. But initially, that fight was supposed to be a bare knuckle contest because Donny the Bull Adams, <clears throat> he'd actually Roy had come across him very briefly in Leicester Prison, uh, and he had a huge, huge name inside or in the fighting circles. Roy was um was just coming towards the end of his fifteen year sentence. I was eight. It's in the it's in the book anyway. I write that many books. Uh, I'd have to literally stop and think, but he did. He did do. I'm sure it was over ten years. And um, why Roy was inside? Donny was kind of fighting at gypsy fairs, and Roy had come out, and he he did have a couple on um, Barnet Fair, but all the money was in taking this Donny the Bull Adams. So their first fight was initially going to be without gloves. And that's when the authorities come in and said, listen, it's not happening. You'll both be arrested. Um, you would be, be both done for a free, I think it says in the book. So the plan was, the, the agreed was that they were going to put a pair of gloves on. And after the first round, the crowd were going to form a circle. And, and they were going to take the gloves off and fight to the death. This was a huge, huge event in London. I mean, you've seen the, the, the documentary... You know that was it's it's vintage footage, and I think it just kind of um, gets a point across a lot of the, the old hard men, if you like, like him. When you watch him, 
and you see him, he doesn't really speak loud. He's kind of very quietly, softly spoken, very cockney. Um, yeah, he's very apples and pears, pie and mash, Chaz and Dave, jelly deals kind of thing. As is, um, as is his boy, Gary. Uh, I'm really looking forward to be working with Gary in 2021 again. Um, we're going to be doing Roy Shaw 2, the book. The, lots of um, old tapes which have never been heard before. And obviously we're going to have um, Gary's input. That book, I was at Gary's house last year in the February and we released that on... It was the May. So, was it a rush job? Possibly. Um, but that was just... Gary just wanted to separate a lot of facts and fiction. And there's a lot of people jumping on the bandwagon with his dad. Um, you know, kind of... You know, making up stories. or uh, And, you know, he's, there's no, he's no longer here to say, well... And, and Gary Gary doesn't get involved in that world. He never, never ever has. He, you know, he's... he's um, He's a bricky by trade, and that's initially why he moved away from London because he was a Shaw, and the police wouldn't let him be. But he, um, you know, he didn't try and copy off his dad. And the best advice his dad ever given said, "Listen, you know, there's too too many cameras out there now. Society's changed. Everyone's a grass. So get yourself a trade." Gary had the nous to um, to move up to Lincolnshire, and and he's done very well for himself. But yeah, I am looking forward to working with Gary and there's still a lot, you know, I sit back often and I sit back and I read all the, the films and the books and, and the characters and you think, where's his? And I know that there was a certain filmmaker um, plotting to do Roy's book and I think it will get done eventually. There's only, there's only, there's only you know, there's only so much Gary can hold the door because... A character like that, you're not going to contain forever. People want to know. People, the public demand. Um, Roy Shaw's life now is is almost public property. Yet it hasn't had the film, in my opinion, it hasn't had the exposure. Certainly, what a lot of other other stories have had, which you know, I, I've did I've did um, projects on things, and they're almost almost, if you like, more well known than Roy. And um, here you have this kind of he was what he was, and you know, I didn't know him. Never, you know, but he's a he was a he was a fantastic, incredibly intriguing guy to study. And I think the film will be made eventually. Um, I know from my perspective, I'm going to be going down in the new year with Gary, and he's going to be showing me where his dad was brought up in Dagenham. Um, you know, I know he was. It's known that he was born in Stepney. So, that, you know, a lot of people think that was Roy's manor. Um, Gary's going to be taking me to his, his his dad's house and we're going to be getting a lot of facts out there. Um, ultimately, our aim is to do the Roy Shaw 2, the second book, and um, Me Machine, we're going to be making that into a documentary with um, based on, you know, Roy's life structured, you know, and I don't think there's anyone better to... Um, to be more equipped in, you know, answering, you know, Gary, really, you've only got to look at him. He's, he's almost got that kind of scary shot, the eyes, you know, I mean, I never met Roy, but one thing that you, when you look at him, or when I first come across him in, in W. Smith maybe 20 years ago, was that stare. Um, you know, you're talking about, you can literally see it in his eyes that this guy's been certified you know, you're talking about someone who's who's kicked prison steel doors off. Um, yeah, he, he would be at the drop of your hat, probably your worst nightmare. But yeah, overall, um, just to um, recap, we are going to be doing the Roy Shaw 2 book. With, I'm going to be doing it with Gary Shaw and there will be a documentary. But Donnie the Bull Adams, he was the man, I suppose, before Roy come on the scene. Roy's scene... All alarm like he was getting, um, and it was easy money for Roy because by this time he was too old to become a pro. Yes, he had been a bit of a pro, but he'd come out. His best years of his life were eaten by the locusts in prison, and the only thing he could do was, you know, he didn't want to go back to prison again. Was was to fight, and um, he come out and he fought Donny the the Bull Adams. 
the fight or lack of fight, um, you know, it's all to see on YouTube. We, we put the clips on the four doc of the four clips, which is over. I think it's an hour um, from 1975. That was never ever saw, seen before. And Gary kindly let us use it for this channel, which has uh, put us, you know, on a good stand to where we want to be. But um, yeah, a lot of people do think that Roy, you know, he, he was it, there wasn't that much in it. There was about six years in it, and. Um, and believe me, that Donny the Bull Adams was one hell of a fight until obviously Roy took took over and then, and then became the governor. But thank you so much for supporting this channel, guys. Keep following them. So don't forget to click down and subscribe. And this book, which is full of facts from the Shaw family, will be getting made into a documentary, 2021. Um, and the Roy Shaw 2 book is going to be coming 2021. Thank you.